Guys, next step is uh, to actually find that normal and then do our extrusion. So you, this is like the fourth or fifth time we're developing this normal part here. And, and so you should start mastering this around now. So we have a surface. We're going to find the centroid. That's what this right here, OK? Um, the, these two right here are sort of, they, they kind of go hand in hand. The UVP are the points along the UV coordinate of a surface. So that's, this is going to plug into the UV that we're going to evaluate and find a normal for. In this case, it's only one point and it's only one surface, and that's the centroid here is our point input. And that one surface is going to be the S input there and the S input here. So you'll notice that it creates this little plane right there. Okay, so um, when you start to do these referential geometry um, modifications, you need to pay very close attention to which direction the axes are facing, okay? The X is going to the right, and the Y is actually going down on that plane. So should you ever use that plane to generate geometry, your Y negative is actually going to go up. Does that make sense? Okay. But that's not really relevant for us right here because our surface normal is either going to go, you know, one way or the other, and it's, it's you know, positive or negative, it's going to go along the correct axis anyway. So um, we're going to go to um, surface and uh, extrude. And we can actually use extrude here because it uses curves or surfaces to create an extrusion. So I'll do extrude. And I'm going to um, actually extrude the curve. That's this right here. Plug that into extrude. And then um, notice how the normal is purely a vector. We need to give it a magnitude. So what tool do we need when we need to provide a magnitude? Amplitude. Yeah. Extra Thank you. Credit. No. No extra credit. <laughs> Maybe someday. It would have to be truly remarkable. What? I mean, like, astoundingly, like, earth-shatteringly remarkable for me to give extra credit. I hear it say amplitude, so... Try it then. Whatever, Kevin. You're the professor. All right. So um, the normal is our vector, and we need to provide a, a magnitude. In this case, I'm going to do a slider, because um, I'm not sure exactly how wide I need it, but I'm going to say 0 to 15.0. You could do, you could do uh, 15 alone, that's fine, whatever. But I just did 0.0 for, yeah, anyway. Um, it's going to give you an error if you're all the way down at zero, so just make sure you pump it up to something that's significant. If you want to extrude it to a specific uh, value, like say 10 feet, just double click on the number, and then go there. Okay. So what does this give us, right? It, it looks like a, you know, like a wedge shape sort of thing, like almost like a doorstop. But really, if you turn everything off except for that extrusion, what you really get is, is the surface, the walking surface of our bridge. Is that making any sense? Simple enough, right? You'll just need to make sure that, you know, if you have a real model and a real site, that you're extruding it in the correct direction. It could be positive or negative, depending on how you built your surface. So the other thing that I want to point out um, is if for some reason you have a, you know, like a, a surface to build it off of, you're going to want to pick either the positive or negative direction to create thickness on your material, right? Because nothing in architecture is paper thin. Um, so, um, to simulate that, I'm going to very, very quickly just put a four-point surface around um, my model like that. And if, if you guys care about it, you don't have to do this part, really. Um, but if you care about it, you would want to grab these surfaces, make sure project is on, and then you can move it down to intersect. And it's going to be right on that surface. All right. So... Um, I'm going to 
I'm going to keep jumping ahead again because that that's not necessary for you to do. But the reason I did that is so that you can see what happens if you create thickness in the wrong direction. Um, in order to uh, create thickness, we're going to we're we're going to again um, create a relationship between you know a few different uh, elements here. You could extrude the surface, but the downside is extruding the surface doesn't have um, what am I trying to say? How do I want to describe that? Extruding the surface will not give you an exact, um, a uniform thickness throughout the whole thing. So I'll draw a quick diagram why. Uh, if you have an arc, and I'm going to exaggerate it, right, something like that, and you extrude it in the Z direction, right, you want this thing to go four inches up. Well, the problem is it's going to go four inches up in the center but it's not gonna go four inches out at the sides, right? It's just going to move up from here to here and then do this, the exact same arc. Does that make any sense? Yeah. So what we've gotta do is rather than extrude to get it to go outward, we need to offset surface. So I'm gonna to go to surface, utility, and offset. And this one I think is kind of new, so I'm gonna put a tag on it surface utility. And remember, I think we only did this once before, but we take that extruded surface, we plug that in, and all you really need is to create the offset distance. Um, so I'll do a slider from zero to, and here's something you need to consider. Our units are feet. Do we want to extrude by feet, or do we want to extrude by inches? inches? Probably inches, right? Because most, like, let's assume this is a slab, right? Like a concrete slab. They're only going to be like, you know, four, six inches thick, something like that. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to want to do inches. But I'm going to create my slider for inches, and then I'm just going to use a mathematical operator to change it um, from feet to inches. So I'll say 0 to 12. And then I'm going to go to math, operators, division, and I'm just going to say my slider number, say 6 inches, divided by 12. That's going to give me a value of 0.5, right, half of a foot, and I'll plug that into D. So you can see that it went down, which is actually the, the positive direct, like the, the correct direction, not positive direction. Um, but it is the positive direction, coincidentally. Um, so I actually, I don't really know what retrim offset does. I've never actually played with it, but let's see real quick. False. Didn't really change anything. Retrim offset. Anyway, don't worry about that. So, um, so here's, we have the extrusion, but it's, it's hollow. Okay, so this is kind of that next level of connection that you're going to need to figure out how it operates a little differently than, than Rhino in that sense. Um, so in order to create the connection there, we just need to find the edges around both of these surfaces and loft those edges together. It's super easy. So I'm going to go to um, Surface Analysis and Deconstruct BRIP. And I'm going to select this surface right here. Then I'm going to say copy paste and select my offset surface and plug it in there. And all I need to do here, remember what I said about loft versus ruled surface? I have two separate edge sets. Right now I have four edges in each one. There's four in this and there's four in the other one. Um, I just need to use a single ruled surface plug in all four of these edges and all four of these edges, and I'm going to be able to create solid, um, uh, like a cap around the whole thing. Am I done? No. Okay. Why am I not done? I'm just assuming you like Well, I mean, it's, it's definitely a good thought. Um, theoretically, I could be done. But this is not going to act like a solid right now. Um, 
because I have surfaces around the edge. That's these. See how they're not a part of the overall geometry? Um, all I need to do is just join it all together. Okay? So I would just take, and, and you could pull from any of the previous surfaces if you want, but the good thing is I have my surfaces right here, top and bottom. Um, so you just need to go to um, intersect, shape, and solid, is it solid union? Or boundary volume? I think it's boundary volume is gonna operate better for us in this case. I forget the specifics. We'll try solid union, but I don't think it's going to work for us here. You just hold shift to put them in. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's going to work. No, is it just not closed? Yeah, it's not closed. Yeah, I think we want boundary volume. This one right here. So I'll put my surface in there, my face in here, and my face in there. And there you go. So now, again, I'm going to turn everything off except for my latest geometry, and that's what I have. It is one solid volume for my six inch thick walking surface. What questions do you have? Should I give you a little bit of time to catch up? Yes. yes. Okay. Am I moving too fast today? Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, I'll slow down.